So in this video, I'll discuss the Carnot cycle. So the Carnot cycle is a two-temperature cycle, meaning it only works within two temperature states, T1 and T2. So let's consider that T1 is greater than T2. So how does this cycle uh, work? It has two isotherms, T1 and T2, and it has the two adiabats right here. So let's consider this particular flow. So from A to B, we have an isothermal expansion. So this is that path. Okay? And then from B to C, we have an adiabatic expansion, this one. Okay? From C to D, we have an isothermal compression. Okay? So from C or from B to C, na change na yung temperature. So C to D, isothermal, pero T2 na yung temperature natin. Okay? And then an adiabatic compression from D to A which is this path. So that path closes the cycle. Okay? So calculating the internal energy, enthalpy, W, Q, and the entropy, delta S, we have for the first step, zero ang ating internal energy and enthalpy because this is an isothermal process. W is negative NRT1 ln V2 over V1. Q is NRT1 ln V2 over V1 or just the negative of your work. Delta S is dQ over T or nR ln V2 over V1. Okay? So for the second step, it's adiabatic. So zero ang ating Q and delta S. Okay? So for the delta U, it's Cv times T2 minus T1. Delta H is Cp times T2 minus T1. Work is equal to delta U. That's Cv times T2 minus T1. So for the, the step C to D, isothermal ulit. So zero ulit yung ating delta U and delta H. So the work is negative nRT2 ln V4 over V3. Q is just the negative of W. And delta S is just Q over T2. Okay? So yung Q nyo, nagiging nRT2 ln V4 over V3, that's positive. And delta S is just nR ln V4 over V3. Okay? So the final step is an adiabatic process. So wala tayong Q and delta S. The delta U is Cv times T2, T1 minus T2. Delta H is Cp times T1 minus T2 and your W is just delta U which is Cv times T1 minus T2. So the sum or the thermodynamic properties in the whole cycle is for delta U, 0. Kasi that's Cv T2 minus T1 plus Cv times T1 minus T2. So pag inan yan, 0 yan. Ganon din sa enthalpy. Okay? 0 din yung state function na to. For W, the net change in the work is negative nr times t1 minus t2 ln v2 over v1 since v2 is greater than v1 and t1 is greater than t2 this particular value of work is less than zero because of this negative sign kung negative yung work nyo positive yung magiging net na uh, q for delta s we have to prove that this value is zero using the adiabatic relationship so adiabatic relationships exist at these particular paths B and C, or B to C and D to A. So, we have the following relationships kapag ka derive nyo yung adiabatic relationships ng B to C tsaka D to A. Okay? So, for B to C, we have Cv ln times T2 over T1 is equal to negative Nr ln times V3 over V2. So, that is for the first adiabatic step. So, for the second one, we have Cv ln T1 over T2 is equal to negative Nr ln V1 over V4. So, we have this particular conclusion based on the adiabatic relationships. Okay? NR, negative nr v3 over v2 is equal to nr ln v1 over v4. You just have to um, get the reciprocal of this. Tapos magiging negative yung value niyan. So makukuha nyo tong equality na to based on the two given adiabatic relationships. So malalaman nyo din na v4 over v3 is equal to v1 minus v2. So for the delta s total, we have nr ln v1 v2 over v1 plus L, NR, LN, V4 over V3. That's for the two isothermal steps. Okay? So, syempre, since we have this relationship, pwede natin i-convert yung V4 over V3 to V1 over V2. So, mangyayari, ganyan ganito, NR, LN, V2 over V1 plus NR times negative LN, V2 over V1 because V4 over V3 is equal to V1 over V2. Therefore, okay, that's negative, or LN, V4 over V3 is equal to LN, V1 over V2 or negative LN. I'll write this right here. Or LN ng negative na V2 over V1. Okay? Kaya ganito yung naging result. So therefore, your delta S is 0 for, for the whole cycle. cycle. Okay? So the work total is equal to this. Okay? We have already uh, proved that it is less than 0. 
while the Q total is greater than 0. Okay? So an interesting thing about this cycle is that depending on the flow of the cycle, meaning the direction of the paths, okay, we will produce two types of engines. So engines are devices that can convert heat to work and vice versa. So if the cycle is clockwise, meaning the direction is from A to B to C to D, or this direction, we will produce a carnal heat engine. The carnal heat engine has a net work output because the work total is less than zero and a net heat input because the heat uh, total is greater than zero. So meaning at this particular isothermal path, you have a net input of work, Q in, because the Q there is positive and the whole cycle has a net work output. So meaning the cycle is performing work towards the environment. Tapos yung ibang heat ay um, lumalabas dito sa isotherm T2. So since T1 is greater than T2, the heat is being extracted at a higher temperature region tapos na nare-release siya dun sa lower temperature region. So that's for the Carnot heat engine. Kapag naman i-reverse mo yung, yung cycle, okay, ginawa mo siyang counterclockwise, meaning the cycle is A to D to C to B, okay, you have a total work input greater than zero and a total heat output which is less than zero. So meaning, kapag ka-reverse naman yung cycle mo, you are extracting heat from T2 or the colder temperature tapos nare-release mo siya sa T1. Okay? Tapos yung network input mo ay positive. The surroundings is performing work towards the system. Okay? So that is called the Carnot refrigerator kasi nag extract ka ng heat from a colder source or colder reservoir. So pinapalamig mo yung colder reservoir, pinapainit mo naman yung hotter reservoir. So that's what a refrigerator does. Okay? So syempre, for all engines, we have this specific... Um, Efficiencies. So, paano natin na measure kung gano'ng ka-efficient yung pag-extract ng heat ng engine or pag-convert ng heat into work ng isang engine. So, for the heat engine efficiency, we have for the flow, A to B to C to D, the efficiency is equal to the negative of the work of the cycle kasi kailangan natin ng positive values for work. Okay? Hindi natin kailangan ng negative value of the efficiency. So, may negative tayo dito. Because in this particular engine, okay, yung ating net work or yung total work natin ay less than zero. So, kaya lahat tayo may negative dyan. Okay? So, that is over the Q input or the net heat input. Hindi naman siya yung uh, Q ng cycle, just the input heat. So, kapag ka from A to B, yun ay yung heat input kapag ka heat engine. Okay? Because of this uh, particular uh, flow of the cycle. So, the efficiency is now then Q total okay, over work input. Okay, so the Q input is from the isothermal expansion A to B. So from A to B, nagkaroon ka ng uh, input ng heat. Okay, positive ang Q ng uh, step na yan. So this is the Q input. Okay, so substituting the values, we have this as the work of the cycle. Okay, negative, so magiging positive yung value niyan. We have the Q input, NRT1, LNV2 over V1. So makakancel lang yung mga LN, makakancel din yung NR, and makakancel yung negative. So we have T1 minus T2 over T1 or 1 minus T2 over T1. So, makikita natin dito na hindi nagwa 100% yung ating efficiency kasi meron tayo nitong term na to. Okay? Kung wala tayong term na yan, ibig sabihin yung efficiency mo ay 1. Ibig sabihin 100% yung efficiency. Okay? Even for a theoretical engine, the efficiency only depends on the differences in the temperatures T1 and T2. Okay? So, pag mas malaki yung difference ng T1 sa T2, mas malaki yung efficiency. Okay? So, for the coefficient of performance naman ng refrigerator or this N here, okay? So, for the flow A to D to C to B, so meaning counterclockwise naman yung flow ng cycle, so meron tayong net input of work, net input ng heat dito sa ating uh, T2, tapos output naman ng heat dito sa T1. So, kakalculate natin yan as the Q input, that is the heat extracted, kasi yun yung aim ng ating refrigerator over the work of the cycle, which is the work input or the work required to run the cycle. So, the Q input is from this particular step, D to C. This is an isothermal expansion. So, ibig sabihin meron tayong uh, net heat input dyan, positive ang Q dyan. So, the Q input for that step is NRT2 LNV3 over V4. So, calculating the coefficient of performance, we have NRT2 LNV3 over V4 over NR times T1 minus T2 LNV2 over V1. So, positive na yung work dito kasi ito yung flow ng cycle. Okay? Positive yung ating work cycle dyan. So, Cancel yung NR. Since V3 over V4 is equal to V2 over V1, based dun sa ating adiabatic uh, relationship, makakancel yung LN natin. Okay? So, pwede mo rin isubstitute yan. So, makakancel yan. 
and R makakancel, we have T2 over T1 minus T2. So that is how you calculate the uh, coefficient of performance based on the temperatures alone. Okay? So here we have a sample problem. So in the problem, we have a Carnot engine that operates between 900 Kelvin and 300 Kelvin. And it powers a Carnot refrigerator operating between 300 Kelvin and 200 Kelvin. So the reservoir temperatures are now given. So this is TH or the temperature of the hot reservoir for the heat engine. This is TC, temperature of the cold reservoir for the heat engine. And these are the TH prime and TC prime. So the temperatures of the hot and cold reservoirs of the refrigerators respectively. Okay, so... Um, first, we need to calculate for the efficiency and the coefficient of performance. So, we can see in the diagram na, yung ating heat engine ay merong uh, temperatures na, hot and cold reservoir. So, makokompute na natin yung efficiency. We also have the temperatures for the um, Carnot refrigerator. So, makakalculate na rin natin easily yung coefficient of performance. So, for the efficiency, we have 1 minus Tc over Th. It's equal to 1 minus 300K over 900K. That's just 0 0.667, so that's 66.67% maximum efficiency. So that is the maximum efficiency of the engine, kasi uh, theoretical engine na yan. Okay? So for the uh, coefficient of performance, we have TC prime over TH minus TC prime, or TH prime minus TC prime. So we have 280 Kelvin over 300 Kelvin minus 280 Kelvin, that's 14. Okay? That's the coefficient of performance of the refrigerator that is powered by our Carnot heat engine. So, pareho silang re reversible engine dito sa problem. So, for the next one, the refrigerator requires 100 megawatts of work from your heat source or your uh, heat engine. Okay? So, for A, calculate the required heat input to the heat engine per hour. So, ang ikakalculate natin dito ay yung QH. Okay? Kasi given yung work and we have the efficiency, makakalculate natin yung QH. So, for the QH, okay, we need this formula. So, the efficiency is equal to work, which is the work output, and QH is the heat input to the heat engine. That is equal to 0 0.667 kasi nakalculate na natin to based dun sa reservoir temperatures. Okay? So, all we need to do is to equate 0 0.667 by the work over the uh, heat input. So, yung work natin, it's 100 times 10 to the 6 joules per second. Okay? So, this is 10 to the 6 joules per second. Okay? Yan yung uh, unit equivalent ng megawatt. Okay? So, i-convert lang natin yung seconds to hour by multiplying 60 seconds per minute and 60 minutes per hour. Tapos, i-convert natin yung joules to kilojoules by multiplying 1 kilojoule over 1,000 joules. So, makukuha natin sa QH, since siya lang yung uh, unknown dyan, 5.397 times 10 to the 8 kilojoules per hour. Okay? So, next, calculate the heat extracted by the refrigerator per minute in kilojoules. So, we have the formula for the coefficient of performance. Meron tayo nung in terms of the temperature, meron din tayo in terms of the heat and the work. So, we have QC prime, that's the heat extracted from the low temperature reservoir over the work input of the refrigerator. So, we have then QC prime, unknown, yun yung kailangan natin hanapin. The work input is 100 megawatts, so 100 times 10 to the 6 joules per second. Kailangan natin siyang i-convert into joules per minute, so we multiply by the 60 seconds per minute. Tapos, kailangan natin ng kilojoules. So, 1 kilojoule per 1,000 joules. So, equate natin siya sa 14 because that's the calculated coefficient of performance based on the temperature. So, we get QC prime equals 8.4 times 7 kilojoules per minute. Okay? So, here we have the diagrams of the reversible heat engine and the reversible heat pump or the refrigerator. So, for the reversible heat engine, makikita natin na heat is being extracted doon sa higher temperature reservoir, some of the heat is converted to work and the rest of the heat is released doon sa ating lower temperature reservoir. Dito naman sa heat pump, QC prime or the heat from the cold reservoir is extracted by the engine by the use of some work, which is the work prime in this diagram. Tapos, the resulting QH prime is released doon sa ating higher temperature reservoir. Okay? So, for some notes, number one, for isothermal expansion processes, the reversible work is always greater than that of the irreversible work. So, makikita natin dito sa mga PV diagram na yung area under this curve is always less than the area under this curve. So, this curve is the work reversible, yung area non, okay? Yung area naman nito ay yung irreversible work. So, makikita natin stepwise yung nasa diagram dito ay curve kasi it represents an infinite number of steps. 
because of the small amount of volume increments. Okay? So, since the efficiency is equal to the work output over QH, where the work output is an expansion work, the irreversible efficiency is always greater than that of the Carnot efficiency. That's why this is called the maximum thermodynamic efficiency. Okay? So, lahat ng irreversible engines ay may mas mababang efficiency doon sa Carnot engine. Okay? Given the same operating temperatures, TH and TC. Okay? So, given din na dapat pareho lang ini extract nilang QH. Mas mababa yung magiging work output ng irreversible engine kaysa sa reversible engine. Okay? So, next, for isothermal compression processes, the reversible work naman is less than that of the irreversible work. So, makikita natin dito, mas malaki yung area nung under the curve ng PV diagram na to na nasa left kaysa na nasa right. Kasi mga compression processes naman to. Reversible work for compression processes is actually the minimum work. Okay? So, given that the uh, efficiency or the coefficient of performance for the refrigerator is QC prime over the work input, where the work input is the work compression. Okay? This is a compression work. Thus, for heat pumps extracting the the same QC prime or this one since this is the case therefore okay the coefficient of performance of any irreversible engine is always less than that of its corresponding Carnot engine if they are working at the same temperatures TH and TC okay now let's take note of the things that engines cannot do so for number three it's called the Clausius statement so based on the Clausius statement no engine can do the following without work input it violates the Clausius inequality. So the Clausius inequality states that heat flows from a region of high temperature to low temperature para ma-reach yung thermal equilibrium. So based on the Clausius statement, wala tayong engine na spontaneously nag-extract ng heat from a low temperature reservoir tapos i-release niya sa higher temperature reservoir. Hindi yan pwede. Kailangan merong input ng work para at least maging ano siya, refrigerator. Okay. So, next is the Kelvin-Planck statement. So, based on the Kelvin-Planck statement, no engine can do the following. It violates the Clausius statement. So, ano naman yung hindi pwedeng gawin ng mga heat engines? So, the heat engine cannot convert all the heat to work at 100% efficiency. Kasi nakita na natin dun sa ating Carnot cycle na hindi talaga nakoconvert lahat ng heat into work. Some of the heat is released dun sa cold environment based dun sa ating diagram. So, kung makikita nyo yung uh, Carnot cycle, so meron tayong A, B, C, D. So, this is the isotherm TH and isotherm TC. So, sa first step, this is an isothermal expansion. So, dito nagkakaroon ng input ng work, QH. Okay? Pero dun sa cycle, para makompleto siya, kailangan natin ng isothermal compression which releases QC. So, hindi po pwedeng mangyari itong sinasabi ni, or itong diagram na to, based on the Kelvin-Planck statement. Okay? Because we need this particular step dun sa Carnot cycle para makompleto natin yung mismo cycle. Okay? So, meron ding equivalence yung ating Clausius and Kelvin-Planck statements. So, first, violating the Clausius statement also violates the Kelvin-Planck statement. So, if you uh, illustrate this particular uh, equivalence, kung meron kang non-Clausius engine or non-Clausius refrigerator, tapos pinair mo siya sa isang Kelvin or sa isang Carnot engine, okay? So, kung ipipair mo yan, ang gagawin mo, yung work na to ay ipapower niya yung uh, non-Clausius engine. So, ang mangyayari, okay, i-minus lang natin yung mga QC for equivalence, okay, pa para makita natin kung anong mangyayari. So, kung i-minus mo yung QC dyan, makikita natin dito na magiging zero yung net flow ng heat. Kasi meron kang QC na output, meron ka rin QC na input. So, magiging ganyan yung mangyayari. Wala na ka ng QC. So, since yung QC na to is equal to the QC here, kasi kung ano yung ini-extract mo, doon sa low temperature reservoir, yun din yung itatapon mo doon sa high temperature reservoir kung ikaw ay isang non-clausius engine. Okay? So, mawawala rin to itong nasa taas kasi that's QC minus QC. Ibig sabihin, wala ka ng input, all your input becomes the work. So, this is QC minus QC. Ang mangyayari, magkakaroon ka ng non-Kelvin engine. Okay? So, ang ginawa ko lang ay sinubtract ko lang yung QC sa buong engine. Kasi QC is already cancelled dito sa baba. Okay? So, kung i-minus mo yung QC na to, sa so QC na to, dapat i-minus mo rin siya dito. Okay? So, ang mangyayari, magkakaroon ko ng non-Kelvin engine. Yung engine na hindi sumusunod sa Kelvin-Planck statement. So, ibig sabihin, if you violate the Clausius statement, you also violate the Kelvin-Planck statement. Yun lang ibig sabihin niya. 
Okay? So, violating the Kelvin Planck statement also violates the closure statement. Paano naman? So, kung magsusunod tayo ng isang non-Kelvin na heat engine, i-pair natin siya sa isang um, Carnot refrigerator. So, yung Carnot refrigerator na yon, kailangan yun ng work. So, yung work na to, yun yung gawin nating work input doon sa refrigerator. Okay? So, ano mangyayari? So, magkakaroon ka ng ganito. Yung work mo ay maka-cancel kasi yung work input mo dito magiging work out or yung work output mo dito magiging work input mo dyan. So, maka-cancel yung dalawang work. Okay? Magiging work minus work yung line na to. So, ibig sabihin, may ma-minus mo lahat ng work doon sa input tsaka output to be able to conserve the whole uh, system. So, mangyayari, since QH prime minus work is QC prime, okay? So, magiging QC na to. QH minus W is 0 kasi QH is equal to work dito. So, magiging cancel na to. Okay? And work minus work is 0. So, ibig sabihin, magkakaroon ka ng a non closure heat pump. So, violation of the Kelvin-Planck statement can also violate the closure statement. So, ito lang yung sinasabi ng uh, equivalence ng closures and Kelvin-Planck statements. So, here we have a sample problem. So, in this problem, a certain irreversible heat engine operates at 75% of its maximum thermodynamic efficiency. It collects 100 kilowatts of heat from a 200 degree heat source and then releases residual heat to a 25 degree heat sink. Okay? So, ang unang gagawin ay calculate the efficiency of this heat engine. So, when we say this heat engine, itong heat engine na to, irreversible heat engine. So, ilalabel lang natin. This is QH. Okay? This is TH. And this is TC. Okay? So, ang gagawin natin, kukunin muna natin yung maximum thermodynamic efficiency or the efficiency of the Carnot engine. So, that's 1 minus TC over TH. Iko-convert nyo muna sa Kelvin lahat ng temperatures. Okay? Yan. So, after getting the maximum thermodynamic efficiency, we get 0 0.3699. So, since the irreversible heat engine operates at 75% of the maximum, Imo-multiply lang natin sa 0.75 yung ating maximum thermodynamic efficiency to get the efficiency of the irreversible engine. So, ang makukuha natin ay 0.2774. So, yun na yung efficiency, efficiency ng ating um, irreversible heat engine. Okay? So, for B, calculate the work output of this engine after 1 hour. So, in kilojoules. Okay? So, ang gagawin lang natin, yung 100 kilowatts, okay, i-convert lang natin sa energy within an hour. Okay? So, 100 times 10 to the 3 joules per second times 60 seconds per minute times 60 minutes per 1 hour. So, makukuha na natin yung joules per hour. Multiply natin ng 1 hour kasi yun yung time elapsed. Tapos, 1 kilojoule over 1,000 joules para makuha natin yung kilojoules na unit. Okay? So, work output lang yung unknown and we have the efficiency of the irreversible engine. So, makukuha natin yung QH. So, QH is 9.9864 times 10 to the 4th kilojoules. That's the energy uh, extracted from the high temperature source after one hour. Okay? So, let us see. If it powers a reversible refrigerator, so the re refrigerator is reversible, meaning uh, maximum yung kanyang uh, coefficient of performance or malaki ang coefficient of performance niya. Operating at negative 10 degrees Celsius, so this is the TC prime and this is the TH prime. Okay? So, calculate the amount of heat extracted per minute naman in the cold reservoir. So, ang kailangan natin ay yung QC prime. So, to be able to get QC prime, kunin muna natin yung coefficient of performance, TC over TH minus TC. So, i-convert again sa Kelvin yung nasa taas. Convert to Kelvin. And then, kunin lang natin yung difference. Kasi yung delta T ng degree Celsius, again, is equal to delta T ng Kelvin. Okay? So, makukuha natin yung N or yung uh, coefficient of performance, uh, 7.52. So, 7.52 is also equal to the QC prime over the work. Okay? So, QC prime over 9.9864 times 10 to the 5 kilojoules per hour. So, i-convert natin siya sa kilojoules per minute. So, i-multiply natin siya ng 1 hour over 60 minutes. Tapos, equate natin siya sa 7.52. So, makukuha natin yung QC prime. So, QC prime is 1.252 times 10 to the 4 kilojoules per minute. So, this QC prime is the amount of heat being extracted from the cold source or cold reservoir every minute. Okay? So, this ends our discussion on the Carnot cycle, the Carnot engine, heat engines and refrigerators, efficiency and um, coefficient of performance, as well as the Kelvin-Planck statement and the Clausius statement equivalencies. Okay, so see you next video.